Welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Layman. Today, we will be talking about Japanese whiskey. Uh, just a brief history of Japanese whiskey here. The Japanese whiskey industry uh, is generally credited to being founded by two men, Shinjiro Tori and Masataka Takatsuru. The two men ended up founding a distillery together, and later on, Masataka Takatsuru ended up splitting off and starting his own distillery. Tori would go on to found the Suntory Distillery, while Takatsuru would go on to found the Nika Distillery, or what eventually became those distilleries. Today, we're gonna be trying a whiskey named after Takatsuru from the Nika Distillery, so let's get into it. So right off the bat, very light colored whiskey. And that's something I've noticed with not all, but some Japanese whiskeys. They, they uh, are often very light colored. Suntory Toki mm. comes to mind specifically. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a, very it's a bright yellow color almost, I would say. No age statement on the whiskey bottle either. So it could be a fairly young whiskey that can also contribute to lighter color as well. Hmm. So what are you getting on the smell here, the nose? Smoke. It, smoke? Yeah, smoke, it smells like a Smells kind of yeah, like a Japanese whiskey, like which I think also has a lot of similarities to Scotch. Very much so. Yeah, very very smoky, not hmm. super like pungent corn or anything else, probably because there's no corn in it. I would guess, yeah. We think of it as it's just malted barley, because they they uh, they the J Japanese whiskeys tend to follow in line with Scotch because that's where they was originally kind of learned from, correct? That's correct, yeah. So I'm wondering, um, it doesn't say on the bottle what uh, what the mash bill is, but we can look that up and we'll put it on the screen here for you down here. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm guessing there's probably no corn. That tends to be the hallmark of just uh, bur whiskeys. bourbons and American whiskeys, yeah. So we've tried a couple other Japanese whiskeys now. We Toki, have. Toki, uh, Yamazaki, we have a couple other uh, we have Hibiki up here, the the Matsui's, there was two different variations of that. That's right. I don't think we've done any videos besides the Toki. Just Toki, that's the only one we've done a video of, so. So I've actually tasted this now already, and mm -hmm. I've it as well. Um, very little smoke on the palate compared to the nose, I would say. Um, it reminds me a lot of a scotch, though. Specifically, uh, Speyside. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. I think it's, it's subtly fruity, it's got a, a hint of spice, It's it's sweet. Um, it's, it's got a fairly delicate flavor, but a, a little bit of punch to it. I would specify this is actually mostly smoky. Really? I was yeah. going to say that I also am getting quite I, a bit It's got a lot of smoke, and the flavors behind it are very, like, kind of lost behind the smoke. Wow, so you guys are getting a lot of smoke taste on that? Because I'm really not Not like an Isla smoke, but more like what I get from Johnny Walker's. Okay. It's a bit of that, like, subtle smoke, but... Hmm. It's much more prevalent than non-existent, like you were getting, That's or fair. seem to be getting. Yeah, well, I'm, I think just compared to the smell, I wasn't getting very That's much fair. on the taste. I'm not getting much of the smell smoke, though. I'm getting, it's, I'm losing a lot of the flavor to the smoke coming up hmm. off my breath. When I drink, I take a, I'd like to breathe in hmm, while I'm sure. drinking, uh, like through the nose and the mouth, so I get a lot of the, the aromas, but as soon as you're done with that, you kind of have to breathe out. And I generally don't chug these. So I'm losing like I'm losing a lot of the flavor due to the way I breathe when I'm drinking these. Oh, okay. Right. That's no, that that's fair. Um, I, I, I've sipped it a couple more times since we've talked about that. And I do see what you mean with the smokiness. I think I was maybe misidentifying that flavor a bit, but I still think it, it it's like a, uh, like a, baking spice smoke almost like there's like it's almost like uh, like smoked smoked paprika or smoked okay. cinnamon sure i can uh, see that yeah you definitely get a you get a decent amount of complexity out of it uh and the flavor definitely changes depending on how you are drinking this like if you are a big heavy breather when you're drinking whiskey like i am you're not gonna get much but if you kind of like try to subdue that you get you get a bunch of big bold flavors which are fairly fairly good i i like 
after you said a few things about like uh, those flavors, and I, I tried to so, like change the way I sipped it. Yeah, I, I got some really good flavors out of it. Okay. So let's move on to the ratings, uh, Mac. What what do you, what would you rate this? Takatsuru Pure Malt. I don't like this. It's not it's not bad. Okay. But I don't like it. I'm gonna give it a four and a half, and I want to justify that by saying I think that there's a lot of complex flavors here that I'm not appreciating, and it's not necessarily to what I like to get out of a whiskey. Hmm. Uh, I think it's a neat experience for sure. It's not something that I will ever buy. It almost sounds like you're saying you think it's a good whiskey that you just don't like. <laughs> it could be very well be. I think it's, I like to experience multiple whiskeys, to kind of see the entire range, and that kind of clarifies to me what I do and do not like. And I think that this was a good experience, and I think that uh, Japanese whiskeys in general give me a lot more breadth of experience than like scotch to scotch. I think you can get a lot of variety from Japanese whiskeys. Mm. I think they experiment more than what we get out of scotches. Okay. But I still prefer scotches in general. This was a good experience. It's not something that I recommend. Fair enough. How about you, Kyle? So this may be weird after all the things that I said, but I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay, uh, very solid rating. Uh, Took me by surprise. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is a lot of good flavor. It really just depends on how you drink it. If mm. you are a heavy breather, you're probably not going to get all the subtle, subtle flavors. But if you kind of like step back and hold your breath a little bit, you get a bunch of really fun, playful flavors on the tongue. Wow, okay. And, okay. And uh, after our conversation, I, I did that. And I, I think this is genu genuinely a pretty tasty whiskey. All right. Okay. What about you? I'm gonna go kind of right in the middle, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm giving this a, a five. There there were things I liked about it and things I didn't like about it. So pretty middle of the road for you. Yeah, and it's not because it's an unremarkable whiskey. There were, it, it there's there's very polarizing aspects to it, I think. There, there's, um, the, the more I drank it, the more the smokiness really became apparent to me. And I think I was misidentifying that flavor. And after having more and more sips of it, I didn't really enjoy the smokiness of it. However, the complexity and subtleties and the little hints of spice and fruit notes throughout it, I really did enjoy. Okay. So overall, the, the good and the bad kind of average out to the middle. So I'm, I'm giving it a five. Final thoughts? I'd drink it again. I'd drink it again too, just because I'd be curious to see if I would experience something different. I'd love this with like a steak or something, but your final thought? I mean, I would, I would have it again, but like I said earlier, I'm not gonna buy it myself. But if Matt brings it, It'll happen.